G'day everyone, day two, Tesla coil. So this is a quick and kind of weak little Tesla coil, but it's something I just threw together in about an hour and uh, it could use a bit of tuning to get more output, but uh, it does work and it's making, I don't know, like two inch long sparks uh, at the moment. could probably do better if I tuned up the, uh, the primary. Anyway, this is the circuit very classical Tesla coil. Power supply is the um, uh, backlight inverter supply that we were looking at uh, the other day. I added a Crockroft Horton multiplier to get the output up to about 3.8 kilovolts. And that 3.8 kilovolts is used through this um, high voltage 6 meg resistor that I've made here. Well, I just soldering together some and sealing it up in a tube to charge up the 2 nano 2 capacitor which is then discharged through a spark gap which is set to about 3.5 kilovolt or thereabouts into a 3.9 microhenry primary which is this thick piece of copper wire down here that is loosely coupled to the Tesla coil resonator which is fine wire wound around a piece of acrylic tube didn't actually measure how many turns I made I just did it on the lathe and um, it's a bit rough and ready there's a couple of spots where I've uh, missed a turn well there's a little gap or something but it seems to work pretty well. It's uh, resonant at about 2.6 megahertz, where ideally it would be resonant where the primary is, which is about 1.7 megahertz. The bit of tuning obviously could bring these closer together and you get bet better resonant exchange between the two sides. Uh, it's about 1.2 millihenries as the secondary. Okay, so how does it actually work? Well, voltage source here charges up capacitor until the capacitor voltage is sufficient to break down the spark gap. Once the spark gap fires, you can pretty much ignore this side of it. The current surges into the inductor and charges up the inductor, and when, it, when the capacitor is spent, you know, it'll oscillate backwards and forwards as your normal LC system. There's also some resistance in here that I haven't indicated, but the spark gap probably dominates that as opposed to the, the Q of this. Although it can be very large currents, but I'm assuming this is probably a, f a few tens of ohms once it's fired and the, the actual plasma is established. Okay, so that circulating current induces a current in the secondary. The secondary via resonant exchange, because this has some capacitance, so it has a natural resonant frequency. If they're similar to the primary, there's a lot of energy exchange occurs between the two, and the secondary voltage will ring up very, very high to the point where eventually it can break down the air. So in this case, we've got some pi tins here to produce something like a sphere that has a fairly um, high breakdown voltage and a reasonable capacitance. I, I don't know, probably a couple of picofarad or something, probably 10 or so. And I've got a little breakout point here which is just a bit of wire that I've sharpened. Now, we can fire it up. Um, I don't know how well it will go in on the video because the discharge is quite quick. It's on the order of a couple of microseconds and it, the camera shutter obviously doesn't always pick it up, but you can certainly hear the output of it. So, let's fire it up. Now the spark gap I've made down here by just putting the capacitor lead near the, uh, the primary and if I close it just by moving it a little bit. Okay. My favourite toy, neon bulbs. Now I can certainly see it striking. Whoops. But you may not be able to see it on the video. My incredibly ghetto spark gap here could be something better. What I might do in the next couple of days if I have an opportunity is I will build this better. I'll basically laser cut some acrylic to hold it such that it doesn't change shape and I'll make a proper spark gap. Ah, stop doing that. Certainly here it gets louder when it's flashing over. see the neon bulbs flashing from the electric field even if it's not hitting it. In the dark you can see streamers being pulled out to three or four inches when you approach it. Obviously a, a higher current supply that could make um, the spark gap break down more, more frequently or um, more capacitance here and less inductance would certainly help in increasing the output. But I think for a backlight inverter and a couple of diodes in a capacitor, 
And a big capacitor and a bit of wire, it's not doing too bad. The discharge is pretty much painless, even if you take it to your fingers. Um, the high frequency, you know, nature of it makes it fairly innocuous to take to your body, but uh, it is obviously giving you like a tiny hour of burn at the, the point of discharge, so it's not recommended to be exposed to it too much. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, tomorrow? Don't know. I was playing around with a Marx generator that used um, gas gaps instead of uh, spark gaps, which was kind of interesting. I've built many Marx generators in the past, and some of them are quite large. Uh, we could talk about that in a video if you guys are interested. Um, again, it's something I've done before, and you can have a look on my website, so there's a lot of details on that. Tesla coils are something I've built. I've certainly built um, CW ones before, but I've never built the traditional breakdown spark gap kind of one, which is a bit fun. Alrighty, um, as always, ask me anything in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll try and answer it for you. And tomorrow, who knows, something completely different, maybe not high voltage. Alrighty, bye.